Today's video is going to be a little bit different than anything I've done before. Today's video is going to be about drunk driving and the repercussions of driving drunk and what happens afterwards and what the experience is like. The Canandaigua Academy does a mock car crash every year for their senior students and they watch this reenactment of a drunk driving accident where they see the whole process on what happens during the accident, what happens after the accident, and how it affects everyone involved. Um, I have been lucky enough to be a part of the mock car crash for the last three or four years. I've done the makeup for them. So um, this year we wanted to do something a little bit different and make a video out of it and show some real stories and kind of help make the situation more real because you see it as a student and you see your friends acting out a skit and you see it as something that is impactful, but at the same time, you know it's fake. So um, this year we decided to try and show how important it actually is and kind of give it a more of a real, um, a real scenario to it. So this year I started out with talking to the health teacher at Canada Ego Academy, Trish Tepidino, and she gave me a few um, statistics on what it, about drunk driving and in teenagers. Um, in 2017, there were about 37,000 um, traffic deaths in the United States, and about 11,000 of those, which were said to be about 29%, were related to alcohol. So about a third okay. of all traffic accidents are related to alcohol. And that's in the general population. But teenagers in particular are more at risk, about um, 17 more, seventeen times more likely to die in an alcohol-related crash, which is why New York State has implemented a zero tolerance law, which says if you're under the age of 21, you can't have any alcohol in your system and be driving. So for adults like us, if you're under the 0 .05, it's not necessarily safe, but it's considered legal. Whereas for a teenager, if they have anything over a trace amount in their system that, that is able to be registered, it's illegal. Right. And they'll automatically lose their license for a time determined by the courts. Right, okay. And that's why it's so stressed out, or so stressed the fact of just one, oh, I had just one. Mm -hmm. That's, you don't know how it's gonna affect you. It's not something that's worth going through that whole process and dealing with that. No, and, and you don't know. I mean, you know, a lot of people, they, there was a whole campaign a few years ago, buzz driving is drunk driving, because mm -hmm. people think if they've just had a little, they're safe, but it's something you have to live with for the rest of your life. I've only it's seen it once, women. and it really is moving and powerful. Even though you know it's staged, it mm -hmm. doesn't feel staged. You right, know, nothing right. about it feels staged, and it is really powerful. Mm -hmm. And I have the same philosophy as you. I just believe that safety is the most important. And my sister's very good friend, her best friend, and my mother's best friend's daughter died in a drunk driving accident when we were younger. And that to me has always stuck out too because I saw what her family went through. Right. And it was really a powerful experience. And to see the emotional range that her family felt and all the unanswered questions mm -hmm. it, was, it was really hard so that's always been the thing that stuck with me right as I go through life. it's it's wild because Canada was not a big town I mean I mean well it's a decent size but it's not huge and there's so many stories with doing this project I reached out to so many people and mm -hmm. was like hey I want to be a part of this I want you to be a part of this video or I just put a post out that just talked about it and was like, would you like to be a part of this? And so many people have come forward that I wasn't expecting to happen. I didn't realize how often it actually happens. Yeah, and there's how, so many people yeah, affected. Whether it's a small car crash or a fatal car crash or knowing someone, I feel like everyone at least has a story. Mm -hmm. Every person has a story somehow connected to an accident that was caused by driving drunk. Yeah. And that's something that can be 100% prevented. Absolutely. Especially with Uber, Lyft, mm -hmm. like there's so many options now that make it to where it's kind of, it doesn't make sense to do it. One person's decision can impact a whole community of people right, right. in a negative way like that. And it's, like you said, 100% avoidable. And it's hard sometimes to get teenagers to understand that I've had this conversation with them and they're like, oh, my parents would kill me if I called for a ride. 
Like, trust me, I've seen what a family goes through. Your parents would 100% rather you come home right. than have to deal with that situation. But their brains aren't fully developed, you know? Right. Until they turn 25, their brains aren't necessarily fully developed. So they don't always oh, make the best think. decisions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My man. brain's finally fully developed. <laughs> finally get it. Um, yeah, no, that's, I, that's so, like, a thing to think about. Like, I mean, everybody always says, like, teenagers don't think of consequences. But they don't. They, they don't, don't think about that full process. And with this mock car crash, it shows them the full process. Mm -hmm. It shows them the funeral. It shows them, like, everything. Our school our school goes through the whole process. It's 11.30 p.m. on prom night. Our scene is set on Western Boulevard, about a mile from the dance hall where the prom took place. The silence of a warm spring evening is interrupted by the sound of approaching vehicles from opposite directions. Henry, one, two. A one, two. A one two respond to the intersection of Western Boulevard and Route twenty one. Report of a two car head on motor vehicle crash with injuries. Ten four in route. Ten four in route. Ten four in route. Are you on detail thirteen to the door? Another car appears to be pretty serious. I'd be able to on location. 804. 804. What happened? What happened? What happened? Just back up. Back up. Back up. Is everyone okay in this car? I don't know. Okay, can you back up? Back up. Oh my god. We have one ejection that appears to be uh, 56. We have multiple injuries. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Advice fire, fire, fire when you jaws away. Okay, can you back up? Oh my god. Okay. Come on, come on. Yep, we're gonna help you. Come on over here. 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 In a fire, in a way, almost for two car boat vehicles to not crash with injuries. Is everyone okay? Okay, We're about you. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. Okay. Wait right over here. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? He said, yes, <laughs> we have we have five additional five victims, additions, uh, one of them. Right now, Officer Nielsen and Officer Sanford are assessing the situation. We have one unresponsive male. Okay. You just wait right here, okay? We'll be operating. We have on one mobile. male who has this odor of alcoholic beverage on his breath. Officer Nielsen will be investigating that along with helping to get ambulance and services for all our injured parties. We still have victims trapped in a vehicle. They will need to be extricated by the fire department. Come on over here. So what happened tonight? We were, we were at ball. We, I, I just wanted to leave. It wasn't, it was, it was over. I, 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 uh, I was going to take him home. Him and, and, and Ben. 3497 on location. That, that's, I must have, I must have hit them. I, okay. 3401 on uh, After prime, where did you go? 3401 on location. Just around, I, we stopped by one of my friend's houses just for 20 minutes, maybe. It was a, it was a okay. Okay. I can smell an odor of an alcoholic beverage coming off your breath. How much alcohol did you consume tonight? Maybe three. Maybe three? Maybe three. What, what was it? 
It's just beer. Just beer? Yeah. Uh, did you do anything else tonight? No. Did you take any prescription drugs? No. Any medication pres at all? No. Did you smoke any marijuana or anything? No. No? Just alcohol? Okay. Uh, uh, how do you feel right now? Are you injured? <coughs> no, I'm all right. I'm all right. You're okay? I'm stiff. Okay. I'm all right. Do you... Do you uh, just focus on me. Uh, do you... Uh, have any other kind of medical issues at all? No. Are you epileptic or diabetic? No. Okay. Uh, and how do you normally, are you usually uh, steady on your feet? Do you usually have decent balance? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, being the, some of the, the symptoms I'm seeing now, uh, being that you're, you got the odor of an alcoholic beverage, I can see the your eyes are bloodshot, and your words are slurring a bit. Uh, I got to get bring you through some field sobriety tests, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, so what I want you to do, just come on over here. Okay, I want you to stand right on this line right here in front of me. Okay. Turn and face me. Okay. I want you to put your heels together and arms right by your sides. Okay. All right. Uh, that's. I want you to remain in that position right there. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to give you a, ser a series of field sobriety tests. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do right now is see the tip of my pen. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to keep your head still with your eyes and your eyes only. I want you to follow the tip of this pen right here, okay? All right. So uh, just just follow, follow the pen, okay? As you can see, Officer Nielsen is administering some field sobriety checks on the scene to determine the level of intoxication that he can observe from the driver at this time. We have the fire department working on extrication using the jaws of life and special tools to get that top of that vehicle off so they can get those victims out of the car and get them to the ambulance. All people involved in this will be going to the hospital, except for one. As you can see, they have determined we have one deceased student okay. well, I want you to take a few steps who will back. not be going to the hospital. We will have to okay. right where this water is assess right. that as the coroner gets here for okay. pronunciation of death. Okay. Uh, what I want you to put your heels together and your arms are down by your sides. Okay. Standing with 804. What I want you to do right now, this is called the walk and turn test. I want you to imagine a line straight out in front of you. the corner respond, please. I want please. you to put your left foot on that line. Got the corner I want you to put your right foot directly in front of that, just touch heel to toe. Okay. I want you to stand in that position. I don't want you to do anything else until I tell you to do so. Uh, for each one of these tests I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a detailed list of instructions. It's very important you understand my instructions while I'm explaining it. If you don't understand something, I... I'm asking you to do, just ask me, I'll clarify it, okay? Uh, once it's begin the test, so you can't ask me anything, remembering what I've said is also part of this test, okay? So the first test here is called the walk and turn test. What you're going to do is on that line, the imaginary line straight out in front of your feet, I want you to take a series of the nine The gentleman steps. you see arriving now is Mr. Mr. Mark John. He is the Ontario One, County coroner. Two, He's been called by three, police and so to on. All the way up pronounce the nine. body. At the conclusion of nine steps, what I want you to do is whatever foot's in the front, leave that as a pivot foot. Take a series of small steps. You'll turn around just like this. And then I want you to do another series of nine steps in the opposite direction. Uh, counting every step out loud with your arms down by your sides. Okay? Uh, you understand the instructions so far? Yes, sir. Okay. A few things to keep in, right, keep in mind while you're performing the test. Uh, nine steps. Touch every step heel to toe. Count every step out loud. And keep your arms down by your sides. Once you begin the test, don't complete it. Or don't stop till you've completed it. You understand? Okay. Go ahead and begin when you're ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Uh, one more test. Put, uh, put your arms down by your sides, heels heels together. Okay. 
This is called the one leg stand test, okay? For this test, for whatever foot of your choice, I don't care which one, uh, you're gonna pick up your foot about six to eight inches off the ground and I want to point the tip of your toe so your foot is parallel with the ground. And I want you to look right at the tip of your toe, keep your arms down by your sides and count one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000 and so on. I'm gonna tell you when to stop. While you're counting, if your foot comes down and touches the ground, I want you to pick it up and continue on with whatever number you left off at. Okay, you understand the instructions? Yes. Okay, a few things to keep in mind. Keep your arms on by your sides. Uh, foot six inches off the ground with your leg out in front of you. Uh, count as I described, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and so on. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and begin when you're ready. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. Seven thousand, eight one thousand, nine one one thousand, ten one thousand, eleven one thousand, eleven one thousand, twelve one thousand, thirteen one thousand, fifteen one thousand, six. Okay, okay. We'll we'll conclude that test. How much alcohol have you drank tonight? I maybe four or five. Okay, it's a little different than the three you said before. Okay, uh, I think you've been you're you're too intoxicated to be driving a vehicle tonight. Okay, so what I want you to do is turn around, place your hands behind your back. You're in the rest for driving while intoxicated. At this time, Officer Nielsen is taking Nick into custody for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. The investigation continues. We have a fatality. We have multiple serious injuries here. Nick will be transported to the police department for further investigation and a breathalyzer test. All our victims will be taken to the hospital for evaluation. And this is a manpower extensive scene here. We would have roads closed. We would have all kinds of services being worked on here, investigative and emergency. This would take hours and hours on end to clean up. To clean up. Um, before this app, this accident happened, all of these students were going down the road, everything was good, life was great. As soon as they crossed over into the other lane and head-on collision, life as they know it is totally changed. As you can see, extra care has had to be taken to get our victim out of the car. We don't know if she has spinal cord injuries or permanent damage, anything that might lead to paralyzation. They have to take extra ca caution and care in getting her out and getting her to the hospital safely. In the meantime, our coroner has contacted the funeral director who will be responding to take possession of the, of the body. Parents will have to be notified and a funeral will have to be planned.
we know that about 5,000 deaths per year are attributed to car accidents with people your age, ages 15 to 19. Of those deaths, about 25 to 30 percent are related to drunk driving or impairment or driving while distracted. This time, the funeral director from Fuller Funeral Home has arrived. Paul was supposed to be something that would be like a fairy tale for me, and instead it had turned into a nightmare that I'll never be able to get out of my mind every night when I go to sleep. When my eyes shut, I'm just going to remember that terrible, terrible sound of the two cars hitting into each other and just holding Kendra's hand as she was just taken away from me. And being stuck in that car and having to watch Luke just fade farther and farther away. He was just laying there, motionless. No one was helping because they already knew his fate. Just put a tarp over him like he was nothing. He was a friend a son. And now, he's just a memory. I was supposed to be a counterterrorism analyst, but now I'm stuck. Stuck this way for the rest of my life. Can you imagine living this way, not being able to do anything independently, all because of someone else? This isn't what I dreamed of. This was supposed to be a fun night with amazing memories, but now this. This nightmare forever. It's not how I want to remember my senior ball. I was going to be somebody, but now, now my parents are going to outlive their child. Now I'm just a sad story. Was it worth it? I didn't think it would affect me that badly. I, it just it should have been me. It just it should have been me. They do go through the whole process of showing what happens with a paralyzed victim. They do show the funeral for the deceased student, and they do show, like, the booking scenario of the drunk driver. We didn't film that this time, but um, they do go through that whole process. So they, they really do go through every step of the scenario if this were to happen. when this happened, Uber and um, Lyft and everything wasn't available. It wasn't like a thing that was actually available then, you know, mm -hmm. like it was, you know, someone's, someone you're hanging out with is going to be driving. So and you had to rely on them to not drink and make sure that they're responsible. To right, right. And I said, I want to go see him. I want to go see him right now. Why can't I go see him? No, ma'am, you can't. We will contact you after the medical examiner's done with his body, so I needed to call the funeral home where we wanted to go through so they could go get his body. And uh, they would give me a call back, so I waited all day.